your boss, a room full of people you don't know, or even when you're out on a date, how do you make a real connection? Communications and relationship expert and author of the new book, Relatable, how to connect with anyone, anywhere, even if it scares you. She's here to help us make meaningful connections with everyone in the room. Welcome, Rachel D'Alto. How are you, Rachel? I'm good, thank you so much for having me. This is a conversation that is, I think, starts at one place, but then has to just sort of spread to the masses so that we're all comfortable making connections. And I think, you know, on the break I was telling you, I'm not a huge fan of humanity, but I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. So what is making a connection ultimately about? Because I think the connections I have, I trust that person and I feel comfortable around that person. What do, what do, you, what do you say to that? Yes, uh, trust and comfort are absolutely a part of it. And sometimes that takes time, but it's really figuring out who do I want to invest my energy in? Who do I want to get to know? And and that takes effort and that takes intention. So uh, it's okay to not want to do that with everybody, but we all are, are wired to do that with someone. That's the way we're built. Right, Having to, doing it with someone is the, the operative word, right? So you have to, you kind of have to do it with your family members, but even, you know, for those of us, shout out to our, our new boss. We have a new boss. Haven't met you yet, but I'm, Rachel, you're gonna help me connect with a new boss. How do we do that so that it's not awkward and, the, and it's meaningful? Yes, and, and that's definitely something I talk about a lot in Relatable, and it really starts with making that effort. And there are times where you might not want to put the effort in, but if you know that this is a relationship that you want to give the attention and energy to, then you make the effort. And part of that is making them feel seen and heard, mm -hmm. even your boss, because everybody has that desire. So the person who talks the most in conversations typically rate them the highest. So if we can actually get them talking, it kind of takes the pressure off of you, and you still Still look good and they feel good about you I think and I also think that to your point talking and asking questions allows you to be real with someone because we were also talking about you know you could be at a cocktail party and there is an art form so sort of floating around the room and are you really being authentic so what does it mean to get real it's taking off the mask. Obviously, we are in a stage uh, where filters are everywhere. And yes, I do enjoy them, especially <laughs> when I'm a hot mess in the morning. Uh, but we can't filter out our personality. We can't filter out who we are as humans because then we're not connecting from a place that actually has any sort of staying power. If people are connecting with you and you're not being real, then they're not actually making that real connection that's going to go the distance. So you want to, to let kind of that guard down. Perfection is not real. Right. So show up as you and you're gonna make connections that connect with the real you. Right. So it's, it's really important, all of those, those, get rid of those masks, right. no more filters. Right, I can say I was at the ballpark this past weekend and I thought I was a hot mess talking to someone. And then an hour later, someone said, oh, so-and-so wanted you to have his business card. And I was like, oh my gosh, I thought it was a disaster. But I made a connection without even realizing yes. that. Part of that is also <laughs> being curious. What do you mean by that? Yes, and that's kind of going back to what I was just saying before is that if we can ask questions, if we can get curious about someone and get them talking, it's going to make them feel good. So often we are actively listening, which is a great first step, but curiosity takes those conversations to the next level. Mm. And it shows someone that you're interested in them, which feels great. I'm sure you've been in conversations where someone is actively interested, asking those follow-ups and curious about you. And all of a sudden you feel important, which is really how we make that initial connection with someone is making them feel important. And you know, Rachel, I, my go-to used to be when I met a stranger was, where are you from? And then I read somewhere that that kind of assumes like, you're making an assumption about where someone is from. So my new go-to is, what are you reading now? And it opens Ooh. up a whole new dialogue of, you know what I, what I am reading? Or you know what I, what I want to read? That kind of makes it innocuous enough, but curious enough. Um, but I love that. None of that can happen if I'm doing this. What are you reading? as I'm scrolling through my Instagram feed. Talk to us about disconnecting from that. Yes, and that's one of the pillars of relatability is, is communication, but communication from an energetic standpoint and our presence is everything. If we are connected to our screens, then we're not connecting with the people around us. And we see this all the time. We are missing possible connections. If you're looking to network with someone, you're looking to date mm -hmm. someone, but we're also not connecting when we're face to face with people because we're so distracted by the dings. Turn off the notifications, put right. the phone away, focus on who's in front of you. Again, it's, it's really letting them know 
this matters to me. Right. It matters to me that I'm in front of you that's, and I want to give you that presence. That's right, because you can only get but so much fulfillment from social media, you know, or the likes or the followers, which leads me to the next tip, which is give yourself grace. Yes. Uh, you know, it's a it's an interesting concept because I think that people are so hard on themselves and they're so afraid to say, I kind of get a pass here. We have gone through some serious things in the last couple of years. And if you had social anxiety before, oftentimes it's so exacerbated. Give yourself the grace to understand that it's okay to be affected by it. It's okay to, to be concerned about how you show up mm -hmm. in social media or in real life. And so I just want people to be kinder to themselves because it's going to change the way that they show up and it's going to change the way that they relate to other people. I love this. Rachel, you have been such a pleasure to talk to this morning. I'm so glad you joined us. You've given us some really solid advice Thank on you. how to re-enter society and have those connections. And if you'd like more tips, go out, run, don't walk, get a copy of Rachel's book, Relatable, How to Connect with Anyone, Anywhere. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you.